All right, welcome back. So last time we created our window instance with GLFW and now we are on to creating a, a VK instance. Yeah, so that should be pretty cool, pretty fun. So the first thing you need is to initialize the Vulkan library by creating an instance. The instance is the connection between the application and the Vulkan library and creating it involves specifying some details about your application and the driver. Driver being what controls the GPU. So start by adding the create instance function within the init Vulkan function. All right, awesome, awesome, awesome. Um, pretty sure last time we needed to keep adding this to all of our functions so I'm pretty sure we need to pass our pointer to it as well so let's just do that and then from there I actually might move this around a bit so oh nope I don't want to do that sorry 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 and chuck you over here you go there and then uh, I had to put that behind there just because I never need to use the two together. The terminal never needs to be used at the same time. All right, in our VK, I mean, in our init Vulkan function, we do a create instance, which we are going to have to define just like we did everything else. So let's get it down here below. It's probably going to be a void and it's probably going to take in a app and a pointer to the app. All right. So likely the app. Awesome. Oops, that's wrong. Careful. All right. Let's go and create that function. Underneath cleanup. All right. What are we doing here? Additionally, oh, I need to add a data member to the class, but because again, this is not C++, we are gonna, let's just add it onto our abstract. And that's gonna be of type VK instance. I'm just gonna call it instance. And it is not a pointer, folks, it's not a pointer. Okay, so in our create instance function, let me just scroll down a bit so you can see. <clears throat> we are gonna use that P app in instance, I'm assuming. All right, so we do initialize a struct of VK application info. VK, oops, application info. Oh. And we're gonna call it app info, uh, but we're gonna just initialize it as an empty struct for now. Then we add, oh, if we're adding stuff to it, why don't we just do that straight away? Because with C, you can now do this kind of thing. S type equal to Ooh, VK structure type application info. Don't you just love watching me type and fail to type? <laughs> uh, let's just copy these. That's ridiculous. All right, and do that. And uh, if I remember my Emacs shortcuts better. Ooh, not that shortcut. That's the shortcut. But it shouldn't have got the one beforehand. Damn. All right, well, I'll come back to learning those some other time. Sorry, folks, my interruption. Hello? You all right? All right, sorry about that. Quick interruption, but we are back. Okay, so, <laughs> just shout at you there. Let's just change these back to part of the struct. Um, yeah, that all looks fine. Our application name is gonna be, oh, we'll just call it the same thing as the window name. I would think, can we just see that instead? Yeah, I think our application name could be that. So let's just call it Read Title. Uh, engine name, I don't know what that is, but no engine. All right, this 
is all good, blah, blah, blah. So this data is technically optional, but it may provide some useful information to the driver in order to optimize a specific application. Ah. So engine name may be useful. All this stuff probably is. Our versions and all that jazz. All right, uh, because there's a well-known graphics engine with certain special behavior, this struct is called VK application info. As mentioned before, many structs in Vulkan require you to explicitly specify the type in S type member. This is also one of the many structs with a P next member that can point to extension information for the feature. Oh, okay. We're using value initialization here to leave it as null pointer. What? Oh, okay. So P next is. Maybe we need to be explicit about that. Let's say P next equals just null for now. Perhaps. Okay, a lot of information in Vulkan is passed through structs. That's useful instead of function parameters, and we'll have to fill in one more struct in order to provide sufficient information for creating the instance. The next struct is not optional and tells Vulkan the Vulkan driver which global extensions and validation layers we want to use. <clears throat> global here means that they apply to the entire program and not a specific device. I would have thought that was the case as well, which will become clear in the next few chapters. Okay, another struct to create. VK instant, lowercase k, instance uh, create info. And we're going to call it create info. And we're going to just do the same thing where we define it right away with dot s type equal to this not s slash type s type equal to that and p application info equal to that equal to sorry a pointer of app info all right, that sounds fine. The first two parameters are straightforward. The next two layers specify the design uh, the desired global extensions. As mentioned in the overview chapter, Vulkan is a platform agnostic API, which means that you need to you need an extension to interface with the Windows system. GLFW has a handy built-in function that returns the extensions it needs to do that. Sweet. So we can use <clears throat> these GLFW functions well, function to specify our extension count and our extensions themselves, which are going to be structs of something probably. In fact, we don't even know what they are. Oh, it's just an array. It's, a, it's an array of arrays or an array of strings. My bad. All right. So let's do uh, again uint32 type t. Let's maybe do this now I was I wanted to do this later but let's just do it now get it over with so rather than typing out like you went 16 32 64 whatever we hell whatever the hell we need I want to be able to say just you 32 and then if it's 32 bit int I could just do I 32 so in order to do that I mean I would likely pull this out later on to its own header file so we can reuse it in multiple places, but type def of un32, we want to call it, sorry, u32. Uh, let's just create a bunch of them. So there's like eight, 16, 32, eight, and 16. And oh, come on, man, and 32. And then we want to do the same for, whoops. Oh, my typing is like all over the place today. Uh, struggle through life. <laughs> uh, I would be the signed int. So we would just call that int or the new int. Yep, you int 8t. That kind of makes sense. And down here. We can just do 
U32, if it has to be an unsigned integer of type 32, of size 32, uh, and we call it GLFW extension count, all right? GLFW extension count, the correct case. Set it initially to zero, and we also want const char star star GLFW extensions. And then we are gonna set, why don't we just do that normally here? Okay, GLFW get required instance extensions. Excelsior. GLFW extension count. We pass in the pointer to that, which should update that count for us, as well as return those extensions. And then on our create info, looks like we add these things here. Okay, now my question would be, why don't we just do that up here? And then we can just add these directly into our struct. Uh, so enabled extension count is our extension count. Wait, it's, it's actually GLFW. Extension count and the uh, pp enabled extension names. Ah, yes, it's the list of names. That's what that is. Or an array of names. Is this? Uh, I think that makes sense. Let's double check that I spelled that correctly. I did. By the looks of it. Right, the last two members of the struct determine the global validation layers to enable. We'll talk about these more in depth in the next chapter. Just leave it empty for now. All right. Uh, why is that a separate line? Weird. Enabled. Oh, we're going to likely. Uh, that's a good point. Uh, let's skip doing that. And let's actually pull this out to be its own thing. Because I think we're likely to update that based on something else later on. So I'll just leave it there. I mean, it makes no real difference, but there you go. Uh, we've now specified everything Vulcan needs to create an instance and we can finally issue the VK create instance call. Fabulous. All right, so now Let's do BK result and see what comes out of the end. BK create instance. Passing in our pointer to create info. Uh, null and ah, our app instance, so P app instance. Now, hopefully that works out to be the address the same as that is. Or actually, yeah, the D reference value. As you'll see, the general pattern that object creation functions, some function parameters in Vulcan follow is pointer to struct with create info or creation info, pointer to custom allocator, callbacks, always not pointer in this tutorial. Ah, okay. Pointer to the variable that stores the handle to the new object. And if everything went well, we'll then the handle to the instance to be stored in the VK instance. Oh, for us, it's in our app struct. Uh, nearly all Vulkan functions return a type of VK result, which is either VSK success or an error code. Oh, so we could do some sort of check for that. Oh, they're doing it right there. In that case, let's just do that, yeah. If that call does not equal VK success, I really hope it does, then we need to throw an error, but <clears throat> exit is what we use in C, exit the, um, the running application with the code of 
one for now because this is our first real call, I suppose. But then printf just down an output to say, yo, it didn't work. Failed to create. Oh, hello, typey typey. VK instance. Well, I've just got, I've got a Vulcan instance, so it's kind of clear. And then close out the string. And what are you doing? Why are you searching for Malak? That was weird. And now run the program. Yes, I will run the program. Let's try it out. Build. Errors. <laughs> Never. <laughs> Line 92. Oh, let's go up here. Uh, too few arguments in init Vulkan. Exactly right. Our init Vulkan function requires us to add our app pointer. So far, yeah. And I don't want to exit. No. All right, so that should be addressed. And that's part of the same uh, error. Line 86, we have p application info undeclared. All right. Yes, because we need to put dots to say that they are struct members. That should work. Same with the enabled extension count. And now this one on 92 is saying an incompatible pointer type. So we are passing just the struct. Okay, so maybe we do need to add the actual pointer to that. I think that works. All right, now let's try running the game. We have a window and we haven't errored out. And we quit. Everything looks good. Brilliant. That's nice. Uh, all right, if using macOS with the latest version of Molten, I'm not using macOS, so I'm gonna actually skip that. Oh, that's to do with if you get some sort of error with incompatible driver. Being on Linux, I'm surprised I haven't got that error. <laughs> uh, typically, if this is the fix, blah, blah, blah. Check for extension support. If you, oh, you know what? I'm gonna leave this till the next one. And uh, that could be a nice bit of, ah, yeah, this is the pattern that Vulcan uses quite frequently. So that might be quite good to explain a bit more of, especially if I read a bit more onto it. But let's do this cleanup real quick because it's always got the cleanup after oneself. So in the cleanup function, we need to do VK destroy instance now. This one here and the other two look like they remain the same. Uh, so that null point, we pass a null and we want to use pointer to app instance. All right. Let's try it again. Uh, build and don't do that. Game. Sweet, it runs. Oh, it doesn't need to do that at all. Excellent. Okay, let's just commit that. Uh, we just modified main, so git add main and git. Oh, why are you keep doing that? Uh, what do we do? We created, not we didn't create, but we set up the VK instance. Did push origin main. Awesome, 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 awesome. I also did a couple of extra little pushes, but they were to create a license file and to update this shrug emoticon. Excellent. All right, let's call it a day and then we'll come back to doing the extension support. See ya.